Hello student, welcome to today's lesson. This is biology lesson for grade 12. Student, in our last lesson, we had seen the process of photosynthesis, some reactions that takes place in thylakoid membrane, and in fluid stroma of chloroplast. As well, we have seen the process of photosynthesis in C3, C4 in the CAM process. Now, we will see bacteria. The main content of this lesson are bacteria in the its classification, ecology in the use of bacteria in the ecosystem, and the process of genetic engineering. Student, at the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the structure of bacterial cell, explain the role of bacteria in the ecosystem, describe the process of genetic engineering. Well done. Student, what do you think bacteria are? Well then, bacteria are a unicellular prokaryotic organism with no true nuclear membrane. Bacteria is a unicellular with a prokaryotic one in which nuclear membrane is not found. Bacteria can share some common features together. This include all bacteria have a cell wall made from peptidoglycan which is very important in making bacterial structure to become rigid and absorb stain when chemical is added to it. Peptidoglycan contain amino acid 1. It is a complex of amino acid and the sugar part. A sugar and amino acid complex make the bacterial cell wall. As well, not all bacteria contain outer coverage structure capsule and the motility structure flagella. But all bacteria have a structure like cell membrane, cytoplasm, DNA, and the ribosome. And as well, there is no membrane-bound structure in bacterial cell, like mitochondria and the chloroplast. When we say there is no mitochondria in the chloroplast in bacterial cell, we doesn't mean that they cannot be respired in the photosynthesis. The process of photosynthesis and respiration can be takes place on the surface of bacterial cell membrane or cytoplasm. So they can respire and again they can photosynthesize. Not all bacteria can be photosynthesized, but some blue-green bacteria can be photosynthesized on the surface of this structure. The general structure of bacterial cell can be looks like this one. When we see bacterial structure, not all bacteria can have a capsule structure, not all bacteria can have a flagellum, but they can have a DNA or genetic-like structure, which is said to be plasmid, and again they can have all cell membrane. So, Bacteria is a unicellular organism with this like structure. This is a generalized structure for bacterial cell. Well then, bacteria can be classified based on so many characters. One main character that is very important in classification of bacteria is on the base of their shape. Accordingly, Bacteria can be classified into Coccus 1, which is a spherical shaped bacteria having a spheres like shape. And as well, bacteria may be grouped as Bacillus 1, with a rod shaped bacteria. They can have this like shape. Bacteria can be classified as Spiroches, which is spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria. This like shaped bacteria can be considered as spirochytes bacteria. 
So, based on the structure of and the shape of bacteria, we can classify bacteria into three main types. Regardless of what type of shape they can have, whether coccus, bacillus, or spirogites, bacteria can be found in single, bacteria can be found in colonies, bacteria can may be found in cluster. Another very important criteria for bacterial classification is based on their differential staining. Based on the color indication upon the addition of chemical into the peptidoglycan. Accordingly, bacteria is classified into gram-positive bacteria and as well gram-negative bacteria. When we say gram-positive bacteria, upon addition of chemical to bacterial cellule or peptidoglycan, they can stain the purple. They can indicate purple color. For example, bacteria that result is TB or tuberculosis, as a result of mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria which can be gram-positive bacteria here. And again, gram-negative, which can be stained pink or red upon addition of chemical to them. For example, bacteria which is mutualistic bacteria found in our intestine, E. coli bacteria. The key difference between gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria is they have different cellular content where gram-negative bacteria contain less cellular content, less peptidoglycan concentration is found there. Additionally, but they can have a membrane outside of their peptidoglycan that gram-positive bacteria lack. This is very important in secretion of endotoxins to the antibiotics act over gram-negative bacteria. So, the disease that can be caused by gram-negative bacteria is too serious to be treated than disease that we can encounter by gram-positive bacteria because of the presence of cell membrane outside of their cell wall which can secrete endotoxin against antibiotics applied over them. Bacteria can be result a disease. Before we speak what disease and what type of disease they can cause, it is better to know what is disease and what is healthy to mean. Student, do you know what by means the sense of disease and healthy to mean? Well then, according to WHO definition, health can be stated as a complete and state of complete physical, social, and the mental well-being of an individual. When we say disease, but it is a condition with a specific agent or a specific cause that makes the body to become function in less efficient manner. We mean it is said to be disease. Different microorganisms, including bacteria, can be transmit diseases differently because they can have different reservoirs of infection. They can transmit diseases from different principal habitats. They can have different reservoirs of infection or origin of diseases. Some may be transmit from contaminated food. Some may be transmit from contaminated water. Some may be transmitted from airborne one. Some may be transmitted from another reservoir. By that, microorganisms can be transmitted diseases differently. For example, bacterial diseases, just like tuberculosis, just like cholera, just like that of typhoid. And again, fungal one. For example, just like that of athlete's foot, just like that of ringworm. And again, protozoa, for example, amoebiosis, and again, giardiasis. 
Some may be transmitted by animal vector, like malaria. And again, just like that of African sleeping sickness, the one that can be transmitted by as a fly. Well then, this is a table that can be indicates different microorganisms that can transmit this differently. For example, bacterial disease, the one that just like that of pneumonia, and they again cholera, pulmonary tuberculosis, they can affect most type of respiratory tract, and they again intestinal problem by secreting toxin. And they again, viral disease, they can inject the host they can affect by relieving their genetic material which can disturb host metabolic activity like influenza, like AIDS, measles in the common cold. And as well, there is a fungi. Fungi may be cause farmer's lung. They can cause at least food. Additionally, protozoal disease again, like malaria and African sleeping sickness, which can be transmitted by as a fly. Not only by specific agent or specific cause, disease can be transmitted by different factor. Health factor can be contribute for development of disease. For example, some can be caused by human induced one. When you say human induced disease, a disease that can be developed as a result of our lifestyle, our working condition, can be result of a disease. There is no microbe involvement here, like cancer, like heart disease, like fibrosis, can be resulted as human induced one. A disease that can be encountered as a result of mutation of a sequence of amino acid, mutation of a sequence of bases. When a single basis become added or deleted or substituted, it can be resulted disease. Such type of disease is said to be genetic disease. For example, hemophilia and sickle cell anemia is an example of genetic disease. Not only this one, there is a degenerative disease, a disease that can be caused by increasing in age or aging process. When the cell become failure to be function properly, for example, arthritis disease, the vessel of artery become filled with fatty substance is considered as degenerative one. And the type of disease that we can consider here is a deficiency disease. When we say deficiency disease, it is a disease that can be caused as a result of lack of proper nutrient from our daily diet. This can result or develop a disease. For example, if protein become absent from our daily diet, it can contribute kosher cut. If vitamin C absent from our daily diet, it can result in scurvy. The health topic that we are going to see together is ecology in the use of bacteria. Student, what do you think may be the ecological advantage in the disadvantage of bacteria here? Well, ecologically, we can find bacteria everywhere. Ecologically, they are cosmopolitan, found in desert area, and again, they can found in hot spring environments. Because bacteria can be found everywhere in ecosystem. They can serve the following main function in our ecosystem. 
The one critical importance of bacteria in our ecosystem is causing diseases. Means bacteria can be considered as a pathogen to be developed a disease, which is considered as infectious disease. According to germ theory of disease, every microorganism that can contribute or develop disease are said to be pathogen, where the disease they develop is said to be infectious disease. And the critical advantages, they can widely important in industrial application, in production of so many industrial products. Well, bacteria can be taken slow in recycling mineral elements like carbon, like phosphorus, nitrogen, and the sulfur can be recycled in our ecosystem by the application of bacteria. Well done. Student, what do you think is the ecological role of bacteria in the process of recycling? Recycling to mean it is a process of using mineral elements in our ecosystem continuously again and again without any depletion. Means making the mineral elements that's found in our ecosystem for another without any depletion. This can be carried out when bacteria break down large organic molecules that is found in living organism into smaller absorbable one. When they carry out this one, they can absorb in the product of digestion. And again, they can release something to the environment. To environment. This is how bacteria recycle mineral elements. They absorb smaller parts. By breaking larger organic molecules into smaller parts, they absorb into the product of digestion, and again they can release to the environment. What can be recycled in our ecosystem is the one bacteria can release to the environment. Bacteria is very importantly takes part in nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is very important mineral element. All living organisms contain nitrogen in form of the protein and again in form of phospholipid, which is very important in makeup of cell membrane, in form of nucleotide that makes RNA, that makes DNA, that makes ATP. If nitrogen is not available in the cell, cell may not be make their own protein. They may not be properly maintain their membrane, and again, the nucleotide content get disturbed. By that, the role of bacteria in nitrogen cycling is crucial. Here, there are different bacteria in the process evolved in nitrogen cycle. One important bacteria here is nitrogen-fixing bacteria. This bacteria is considered as mutualistic bacteria that is most probably found in root nodule of leguminous plants. For example, rhizobium bacteria. This bacteria is very important in fixation of atmospheric nitrogen, molecular nitrogen, into usable form, which you call ammonium. Fixing atmospheric nitrogen. Else process that can be evolved here is ammonifying bacteria. These bacteria are considered as a decomposer. Once an organism die, they can break down a protein that is found in the organism, in the animal waste, releasing ammonium ion that an organism can be used to. By that, 
This bacteria is considered as ammonifying or putrefying bacteria. The else bacteria in the process that are evolved here is nitrifying bacteria, where nitromonas bacteria oxidize ammonium either from nitrogen fixing or ammonifying bacteria into nitrites. The process aerobic, where nitrobacter oxidize nitrite into nitrates, where nitrate is considered as a usable form of nitrogen for the plants, which is added to the soil, and that plants can be absorbed to make their own protein from where animals can be fed in the food chain. Another very important bacteria in the process involved in nitrogen cycle is denitrifying bacteria. When we say denitrifying bacteria, it is a bacteria that act antagonistically or irreverse to nitrogen fixing bacteria. For example, Pseudomonas bacteria, the one that can reduce the amount of nitrates added to the, into the soil. They can reverse nitrate added to the soil by nitrifying bacteria into the atmosphere, which I mean nitrates added to the soil can be returned back to the atmosphere by denitrifying bacteria. So, these four processes in the bacteria is very critically important in recycling mineral elements, nitrogen. If nitrogen properly recycled, organisms can make their own protein, RNA, DNA, and ATP. Another very important mineral element that can recycle in our ecosystem by bacteria and fungi are sulfur. When compared to nitrogen, Sulfur is not as much abundant. One critical bacteria that can be takes place in sulfur cycle is disulfovabriobacteria, which is considered as a decomposer bacteria, where an organism become die. The sulfur that is found in their protein can be break down by this bacteria to release sulfur in form of hydrogen sulfide. Once an organism die, either plants or animal, the sulfur in their protein can be get available for the health by this bacteria. The health process that is involved in the process photosynthetic sulfur bacteria. Here, hydrogen sulfide become oxidized, releasing sulfur anaerobically again. Anaerobic oxidation of hydrogen sulfide he is takes place by photosynthetic sulfur bacteria, where non-photosynthetic sulfur bacteria, including a genus of bacillus, Theobacillus bacteria, can be oxidized sulfur into sulfite, then after into sulfates, which is usable forms of sulfur for the plants that can be added to the soil from where plants absorb, from where animals can be fed to make up their own protein, can be delivered by non photosynthetic sulfur bacteria. Student, another very critical advantage of bacteria is they are very important in industrial application. Especially, bacteria that can be respired anaerobically are very important in production of different industrial product like food and a beverage. Bacteria that can be fermented anaerobically is very important in makeup of yogurt, in makeup of bread, in makeup of alcohol, in makeup of vaccine, in makeup of hormone, in makeup of insulin in the different products in industry. We can harvest so much products from bacteria and aerobic respire from the industry. Another critical advantage of bacteria in industries, we can treat sewage, pollution removal. 
We can clean our environment, bacteria dependent. If the population of bacteria in industry and environment get reduced, our environment can be polluted. Bacteria can be genetically modified. Student, what do you think genetic engineering or genetic modification? Well, it is a new application of biotechnology that targets with genetic manipulation, working with gene. It is a recent or new application of biotechnology. This system involves a system of transferring gene of targets from one organism to another. This can be takes place between the same organism or different organism. If a gene of targets becomes successfully transferred, we can harvest what type of product or our desired product from genetically engineered bacteria. Bacteria can be genetically engineered than any other organism because of the circular genetic material called plasmid. This plasmid allow bacteria to become widely accept a foreign gene that can transfer to it. For example, our gene of transfer or gene of target may be from A. We can transfer to that of bacteria. Bacteria can capable to accept a gene transferred to it. After a gene can be successfully transferred, a gene can correctly or appropriately code for the desired function it is going to transfer for. Well done. So the development of three main techniques enable the process of genetic engineering. These are restriction endonuclease enzyme, which is very important in cutting out a gene of target from host or donor individual, and cut open a recipient bacterial plasmid. And again, there is ligase enzyme, which is important to join a gene of target from donor individual to a bacterial circular plasmid. Very importantly, this enzyme is very used to form recombinant plasmid. recombinant plasmid formation. And then another, there is an action of vector agent or in case plasmid may be act in transferring of gene of target between an organism. For example, an agrobacterium to manifest this bacteria, which can capable to accept any target from gene from external organism, can capable to act as a medium of gene transmission between an organism. Once a gene successfully transferred between donor and the bacterial plasmid, an organism is considered as genetically engineered or genetically modified or transgenic organism. Finally, we can capable to harvest our target or desired goal from bacteria. So bacteria can be genetically modified because of it is circular plasmid can easily accept a foreign gene easily. This can be carried out in this manner. A gene of target can be isolated from the donor one by restriction endonuclease enzyme. And again, the part of bacteria that is going to accept this transferred gene can be identified by restriction endonuclease enzyme. Then after, Ligase enzyme become joined, the part that is isolated from the host organism then become joined together 
with two the plasmid here after they become joined together by ligase enzyme there is a formation of recombinant plasmid if the gene becomes successfully transferred from the DNA to that of the recipient one we can harvest what type of products that we can have here finally it is considered as a transgenic organism it can be considered as genetically engineered and a genetically modified organism student in our today's lesson we have seen as bacteria is a prokaryotic organism with no nuclear membrane and again we have seen as bacteria can be classified on the base of their shape and again gram negative as well gram positive based on their differential staining as well we have seen an ecological advantage of bacteria in causing diseases recycling mineral elements and again industrial application finally we have seen the process of genetic engineering which can be carried out by the advancement of restriction the nucleus enzyme ligase enzyme and the vector oriented means this is all about today's lesson in our coming lesson we will see virus and its structure until that goodbye students